Hey, what's up guys? My name again is Steve Potts and today what we're going to be doing is another little tutorial on Camtasia animation and this time what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these. This is uh, called a title slam. It's basically when a title comes flying onto the screen and it looks like it hits or connects with something and then comes to a stop, right? Now uh, that's a good little thing just to add a little bit of drama. Uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, include a sound effect with that as well, like a nice thump or a metallic clank. If you can find some spark assets online and stuff like that, maybe a little dust cloud, you can really fancy this up. But um, for my intents and purposes, what I like to use these for is just a quick couple of title slams to go, uh, you know, to coincide with maybe some uh, dramatic style music. We just have the title going, whoop, 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 you know, just to give the viewer the idea that something here is going to happen. It's exciting and it's going to happen pretty fast. You've got to keep an eye on things. Like I say, just a good way to add some drama. Okay, so to get started, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create some assets, some PNG assets. And what I do, uh, you know, how I create my PNG text images is on a little software called The Creator used to be known as the uh, the logo creator um, really cool piece of software it's relatively inexpensive and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how I use it to create my text um, PNG files with clear backgrounds how of course you use it uh, that's completely up to you if you want to use uh, you know another software like for instance Photoshop or you know one of the free ones I think there's a couple of free um, online uh, text image creators uh, stuff like that you can use online but anyway all right so we're going to start with a blank canvas over here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add in some text over here let's just say uh title slam okay and i'm going to add the text right over there i'm going to center it i'm going to format it by making it larger uh, bring in, in the, uh, the characters a little closer together, uh, larger again. Whenever you're dealing with uh, text and PNG images like this, to come up with a clear line or a clear uh, image so that the line on the text doesn't look fuzzy in your video, you want to make it as large as possible to actually begin with. And then uh, later on, you know, you can shrink it down or size it up in your video without having too many concerns about it having fuzzy edges. Uh, let's see a little bit closer, maybe over there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my background just a gray shadow for now, because what I wanna do is I wanna make my text white. Okay, now, I have the word title slam here. This is a straightforward text. Now what I could do is I could change my font. So, um, Let's just have a look at some of the fonts we have here. Uh, quick old scratch around. Uh, let's uh, with this one, for instance, right? Okay, uh, we might have to make it smaller now. There we go. Bring it in a little bit. Uh, just compact it a little bit tighter. There we go, nicely done. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna export this as a transparent PNG in other words a PNG file that has a transparent background okay so I'm just going to go over here uh, let's go to um, hmm. uh, which file can I put it in uh, let's go over here to zip a day and we just put it over there okay text one I'm gonna save that now watch what I do is I'm gonna delete this, right? Now I'm gonna import that same PNG file. Because see, now it's an image, right? Okay. So now as an image, I can actually do something different with it. I can add a blur to it, which is what I'm gonna do. Put that on there. A little bit of a blur and what I also want to do is I want to duplicate the le a selected element I want to take it just to one side a little bit let's go 
thing the original over there make it a little bigger like so perhaps and then what I want to do is I want to take the opacity down so there's just like just a ghost idea over here okay and what I want to do is I want to drag it a little bit to the top and to the left because what I want to do is I want to create an image that looks like it's coming in from the top left corner right so that what you're seeing over there is sort of a trail image of it's sort of um, a cheap way of creating motion blur by blurring the image and then also trailing it ever so slightly to one side okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to export this as a transparent PNG again okay and we're going to go over here to text 2 okay so that's text 2 very nicely done okay so now we have our PNG thing and now I don't need to save that okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import my media right and I'm going to go to my desktop where's zip it day right there those two bad boys over there bring them in okay so text one right there see that title slam right okay there's text two okay title slam with the little fuzzy bits you can actually see that right there right okay so this is of course the part now where we actually go and pick our definition and i'm going to go with high def right there so there's title slam that's part two and this is what part one looks like okay so now we start to animate a little bit okay so let's just draw both of these out down here all right so that looks good now this is the first part text two ironically is actually the first part we're going to use what i want to do here is i want to drag this out and i want to make it really large and i want to make it seem as if it's coming past the actual screen right so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go three frames in now watch over here see where I click on the step forward one frame two frame three frames now again just to remind you that in Camtasia you are working with a video format of 30 frames per second so each one second of video has 30 images within it okay so what we've done here is we've skipped ahead three frames or three images. Now, if you have our time understanding what I'm talking about here, remember the old movies that had reels, right? They had little photos and those photos were attached to one another and those photos would run past a light and that would reflect on a screen. Well, you would have 30 of those photos flicking past the light in one second or in fact, in the old movies used to be 24 frames. Okay, but so what we're dealing with here is 30 frames. So whenever you see me clicking forward three times or three frames, that is not equal to three seconds. It is equal to one thirtieth of a second per frame. Okay. So we're going to go ahead here and three frames. So let's just start over again. Okay. So boom. One, two, three. And then... We enlarge that, you'll see we are now here. Okay, so to play that for you, boom, right there. So now, what I'm going to do is a total distance of three frames again is where I want it to actually make contact. So we're going to go to where it starts there. We're going to go forward again, one, two, three and three frames and now what I really want to do is enlarge this so you can really see what's going on over here okay because now what I want to do is I want to add an animation so we're going to go over here to visual properties add animation and you'll see again what happens over here on the bottom when you go to where the animation stops and you click add animation it throws the little yellow arrow to the front in other words this side of the actual clip over here right okay, so 
This is kind of why I always tell people to remember, do your animation backwards. Start where you want the animation to end and then work backwards to where the animation started from, okay? So you're going to see what I have over here now is the animation over there. And what I want to do over here is I want to bring this image and I'm going to use the visuals over here to bring it into approximately 100 over there. Well, not approximately 100 and 100 opacity, right? So what we're doing here, if we play this now is this, watch. See that? Okay. It goes in quite nicely, doesn't it? Okay, so we're editing this animation, this particular one animation over here, the part of it. And so what I want to do is I want to make it less transparent or I want to mess with the opacity a little bit in the beginning here and at the end oops, and at the end of the opacity at uh, the end of the actual animation I want the thing to be 100% okay so also let's uh, drag this in the middle so it looks nice and centered when it lands okay so let's play that quickly See that? Boom. Nicely done. All right, so that's one, two, and three frames, and it slams a shot, right? So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead one frame over here. Let's just cut this. We split it over there, and we delete this out. And now we're going to go look for our other clip. This bad boy over here. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that they line up. Right, it would seem to me what I need to be doing here. Alright, let's put this on top. Okay, the size is 100, so it should still be the same. Alright, we put it there like that. All right, so what we've done is we've lined it up. So if we play this now, it should do one of these. Boom. All right, so it flies in. And if you want, of course, what you can do is you can speed this up to make the actual distance or traveling time of the title as it flies past the camera and it hits the screen two frames or, you know, try one frame if you really want. But that's kind of going to be an on-off situation, right? All right, so now what's happened here is the title has now come in and landed. But what we want to give the impression of is that it had a bit of a thump when it got there. Okay. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go in one, two frames. And we're going to add an animation over there. And the animation is going to be that it goes down just a little bit like so. See there? Just a little bit of a tink, right? Then we're going to go back now and see what that looks like. What I want to do is I want to bring this back ever so slightly over there. About there somewhere, I guess. See what that looks like. All right, what we're we doing now is we're playing with this. Okay, so now that's in there. All I want to do is go forward one frame, add another animation over there, and now bring it back. using our settings of here to make sure that we didn't mess that up, right? So what do we have here? That's negative four. All right, so this has got to be negative four there again too. Make that over there. Okay, let's play this and see what it looks like. 
to that just like a little thump and what you can do is you can go in here Just try and mess with things a little bit. So that perhaps that slam that you get there isn't quite as pronounced. Let's go a little bit less. All right, just a little thump sound or a look at least, okay? Okay, so that's really, that's really all there is to this, okay? You bring in your assets that you create wherever you want. Now, again, the uh, piece of software I use is called the Creator. It's got a lot of cool features in it, other than the ones that I've used here today. But um, you bring in your assets, and then what you do is you start off really large and sm like a little smudgy, right? And you want to bring it in past the camera, as it comes past the camera, it hits, and then it has a little bit of a shimmy as it gets there. Now what you do is you play around with your settings, like to see uh, if you can get it to maybe shimmy up just a little bit, maybe one frame. You play around with the duration of things, and then of course what you do is you match it with the sound, okay? You get that nice thunk sound, so that the viewer knows that this thing actually hit something. Because the way you see it here, playing the way it does on the screen, it doesn't actually look very convincing. Now, I know that this video is probably dragged on a little bit longer than it really should have again. And so what I've decided to do is I'm every now and then I'm just going to create some content that you guys can use some digital assets. And today what I've done is I've actually created uh, these uh, little pointy fingers that um, I'll put on the video here for you again. See the, the pointy fingers coming up right, one left and one right, okay? And um, look in the description below, you'll see there's a link. Um, I will provide you with the link to where I got the image from uh, before I actually cropped it out and put on a green background and then used it as, a, uh, and as an animation. And um, I'll also provide you with a Dropbox link the way you can actually download that asset for yourself and then go ahead and use it in your video. Now again, it's not my work, okay, so I'm not selling it to you, and it also means that you can't sell it to other people, however you can use it in your client's work. I don't know how to explain that to you, but yeah, you can't sell that freestanding, what you can do is use it in other work, I guess, you know? So don't go around selling this, um, this digital asset as something that you've created because obviously neither you nor I have actually done this. The full credit for the actual image goes to the person on on Morg, on Morg file. However, uh, as Morg file states, we don't need to provide any attribution free to use for commercial use. I think that covers the explanation for that, right? Did I cover my ass? I can only hope I covered my ass, right? <laughs> because I've already got, you know, enough problems with this. Anyway, so... Um, Steve out. See you guys in the next video. Um, oh, if you like the video, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Okay, I've got some more videos like this coming out. And um, that's it. Now, Steve out. <laughs>